All right, we have one piston left. Let's get to it. Okay, so here are the tools we're using. I've got um, <clears throat> inch pound torque wrench, a couple ratchets, dead blow hammer, ring compressor, uh, ring pliers, a, a utility knife, some oil, feeler gauge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you're going to need a ring grinder and some ring pliers. And we'll cover some more on this stuff shortly. The second ring, I really haven't had to change the gap on those. Uh, the top one, I have every one of them. Uh, the spec per Molly's instructions, it's four thousandths of an inch per bore, inch of bore. So in this case, four thousandths times 3.780, uh, 15 thousandths is your minimum gap. And I'm using a 16, just to make sure. So when you open your rings, these inner flaps are going to tell you where the rings go. These are your bottom groove on the left. On the right, you have your top groove and your second groove. And these are going to be marked. So the mark will face up. Now the top ring just has a dot right there. And that's going to face the top of the piston. Now the first thing we need to do is get some oil in here. All right, so to, to check your ring gap, the ring has to be in the bore. So we're going to put that in. And what I do is take the piston and stick it down in about that far. That way you know the ring is square in the bore, it's not in there crooked. And then take your feeler gauge, and the feeler gauge should slide easily or with a slight drag through the gap in the ring. So this is the lower ring, I have not had to, to adjust any of these. And we're good on this one. All right, I know for a fact I'm gonna have to do uh, to adjust the gap on the top ring. So I've had to do every one of them. So basically you're going to just take your ring and your ring grinder, squeeze that together. And we should be close. Now in addition, I've been taking some thousand grit just to knock the burr just in case there's a little burr on the edges. Just knock those down. Now, let's go test this one. Same deal, you're just gonna put it down in the bore, take the piston, square it up. Take your feeler gauge. And we're a little tight. I'm going to go hit this one again. Now let's try it again. Good to go. So basically, once you look down in here, you can't really see much, but the gap is up here. So you're just going to take your feeler gauge and run through the gap in the ring. Once your gap checks properly with the feeler gauge, you're done. All right, next is the oil ring. I guess that's what it's called, a little crinkly one. Uh, this cannot be installed wrong. It's made either way. There are little stops. On the inner part, there are little stops or the rings that go above and below it. So on this one, you just kind of spiral it in. So we'll kind of start it like that. And just work it around. You don't want to spread it open. So we're in. Next, I'm going to do the bottom ring. 
same deal. Start it like that. Make sure you're under. And just work it around. Make sure it turns. If it doesn't turn, something's wrong. Same deal on the top. I'm going to start my gap on the other side. Okay, we're in. There's your lower rings. Make sure they turn. So next we're going to do the second groove. And get your pliers. So basically you can't spiral these in or they say not to. The instructions tell you to not spiral these in. So our mark is facing up. We put these in the pliers. See how that spreads. Spread that open. <clears throat> and I'll let go too soon. Okay, so that one's in. Grab the top one, find your dot. There's the dot, same deal. Put these in your pliers. There we go. I'm not worried about the orientation of the gap at this point. I'll fix that once we're done putting this in. Okay, so what I'll do is just kind of rotate the gap on the bottom one over there, and I'll leave the gap up here on that one. All right, so all of our rings are in. Okay, we're going to put the Rod bearing, half. There's a notch. See that little tab there? Put that in the notch. Just gonna roll it in. Make sure it's flush on both sides. And the reddit oil. All right, so on your um, <clears throat> ring compressor, this one in particular has a thinner side and a thicker side. So your thinner side is going to be the bigger side, and that's where you're going to start inserting your piston. That will start compressing the rings. All right, let me move the camera. So basically, you're just going to start the piston down into the bore. The dot, these pistons will have dots. They face the front of the engine. So you want to orient, orient your dot, kind of split the, split the middle here on the water jacket, and that way you know you're going to be lined up underneath. And I've got the crank journal in the lowest position straight down below. And once we get the piston in, this is going to come loose, and we'll just move it out of the way.
just like that. All right, some more tapping. Once you have the engine turned over, you're gonna guide the rod to the crank as you tap this up in. Make sure that stays over. So now we're going to bring our rod cap up. These only go on one way. And uh, interesting note, these are fractured. If you take them apart and look at them, you'll see that they look broken. And they, they are. They're fractured. So you can't mix them up. So when you take your engine apart, make sure all the stuff stays in the same place together. Don't mix up your rod caps. All right, so this is finger snug. These will tighten to 15 foot pounds first, or 180 inch pounds. This, rotate this up so I can get to it. Next we're going to torque. So these are torque to angle. And if you watch the last video, each point on the bolt is 60 degrees. Uh, for this, your second pass is going to be 80 degrees. So just pick a point and a stopping point. go from there. So on this one, I'm going to take this point, there's 60, and I'm going to go just past that spot right there. I can see a little mark. Okay, so there's that one. Same on the one below. I'm going to pick this point. This is 60. Go just past that over here. Done.